Hey, welcome back. Today we're talking about hole cut shoes. What exactly is a hole cut shoe and why all the recent buzz? One type that we won't go into detail on is the seamless hole cut as seen here on the shoe gazing blog, but I'll link that in the description if that's something you're interested in learning more about. Stick around until the end of the video to hear my thoughts on whether this matters, whether it's an important feature that will translate into value. So we've got various shoes here. They're all considered hole cuts or a hole cut pattern. We'll talk through the details of each and why it's considered a hole cut. This first pair of shoes is from Zeb Shoes. They are an artisanal maker out of Europe. They do all made to measure, very low volume shoes, but ultimately this is a hole cut slipper in color for Horween Shell Cordovan. What makes it a hole cut is that it's a single piece of leather with a single seam in the back, which is a functional seam that actually constructs the upper of the shoe. And that is the most basic description of a hole cut. It's a single piece of leather. There's one seam that makes the construction. That's it. This is a pair from Acme Shoemaker. I've done a number of videos on them already, so I'll link those above and I don't need to go into detail again about who or what they are. This specific pair is a hole cut Chelsea boot in Horween hatch grain. And this, like the last one, is a pretty straightforward pattern about what makes it a hole cut is that it's a single piece of leather with a single seam going down the back. So these next two shoes we're looking at are both fall wingtips or fall full brooks. Say that five times fast. This first pair is from Antonio Meccariello, and I've done a few videos on him as well, so I'll link those above. We don't need to go into detail about his shoes. At first glance, it doesn't look the same as the others because there is a lot of stitching and broguing detail throughout the shoe, but this is still a hole cut because it is still one piece of leather, a single seam in the back, and all of this stitching and perforation is strictly decorative, not additional pieces, of leather or pattern pieces like you would typically see on a full broke or a half broke or a wingtip. And that's why this is considered a fall wingtip or a fall full broke. This final pair of shoes that we're looking at today is again from Acme Shoemaker. This is another fall wingtip, but this is a lazy man pattern. Now this is technically not a hole cut because there is a secondary pattern piece creating the seamless heel but besides that heel counter pattern piece, the rest of the shoe is one piece of leather or one piece of shell cordovan. The lazy man detail on the side of the instep that creates this lazy man pattern, all of those details are actually part of that single piece of leather and still attached at the bottom of each of those strips. Like the pair from Antonio Meccariello, this has a single seam in the back that is hidden by the heel counter to create the hole cut-ish pattern, but then it has that secondary pattern piece, which is the heel counter, and that is used to create a seamless heel look. So that is strictly an aesthetic difference that myself and the maker chose to do, but it doesn't necessarily lessen the difficulty of doing this because without that, you'd have a very similar look to the last pair that we just looked at from Meccariello. So what makes a hole cut difficult is that you only have a single piece of leather to stretch and shape over the last while maintaining that clean and refined aesthetic. When you have multiple pattern pieces, you're able to manipulate the leather a little bit easier than having a single piece because any flaw, any wrinkle in the lasting is going to be extremely obvious on a hole cut shoe. Like, why does this matter? Why all the buzz about this recently, especially hole cut details, seamless heels, two pattern piece derbies. So I, Myself have commissioned pairs like this and it makes for a very clean, refined look. So, but it also makes for a much more difficult shoe for the shoemaker to construct. So there's typically an increased price with that. Like many other details in the shoe industry, if that's valuable to you and you'll appreciate it and you want that, then by all means, it is worth it. But if that doesn't matter to you, the additional cost that you would have to pay to get that look, if that's not important, then it's not worth it. It's really like many other things in the shoe community. 
all depending on what you value and what is important to you. Let me know your thoughts on the video and this type of content. Happy to do more, but I want to make sure that if I'm going to go into detail or do a deep dive on a certain topic, that it's a topic everyone's interested in. I hope you found this video informative and helpful, but as long as you were entertained for at least 50% of it, consider liking, definitely subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can find out about the upcoming videos and any new content we have on the horizon. Thanks, everyone have a good week.